Hey y'all, this is David up the Hubbard Homestead and we're here today with you. We're doing some hurricane prep. A hurricane, what is it, Ian? Ian. He is uh, on the way and hitting hard. They just, uh, last I heard it was, you know, hit the Florida coast um, at a category four. And so we're doing some hurricane prep here on the Hubbard Homestead and we're gonna show you that. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, a couple weeks ago I had nasal surgery and you see this here just so I can breathe better with these uh, southeastern uh, allergens. So I can already breathe a little bit better and I'm excited to be able to breathe, especially this coming spring. Um, but yeah, come on, I'm getting uh, prepped for our orchard. This is one of our young orchards. So the trees are not uh, extremely well established, even though they're a few years old. And it's our so, stone fruit orchard. Yep, so come on into our stone, stone fruit orchard and it's really close to our house. And this is supposed to be a, uh, a mini orchard. And uh, basically I'm keeping the trees at dwarf height. So. These are uh, plums and nectarines so what i did here is i took uh, big old hay strings and so you can see the hay strings and i uh, tied them down just to different uh, fence posts and so basically all the hay strings are connected um, that's asparagus and all the peach trees are connected and uh, so that way when the big old gusts of wind come they're uh, anchored down this is posts in concrete and so basically if you come this way all the way around the orchard uh, I took the, you know, the big old hay strings and anchored them down and so there's many connected to different fence posts and uh, some, you know, trees to trees are connected and uh, yeah, so this is our stone, stone fruit orchard and I wasn't planning on doing any pruning but they were getting pretty high and so I went ahead and uh, took them down about five or six feet and uh, which was my plan in the winter anyways to have small trees just for easy picking and easy maintenance. Um, so we definitely... We definitely prune heavy. You got to take the rest of those up for the goats? Yeah, all the fruit trees we uh, prune heavy. And then when I was pruning, I saw, and I'm super excited about this, uh, I'm growing ahi amarillos. And so here's one that looks pretty ripe. And so I got ahi amarillo. This is a Peruvian. The rooster's alerting us that something's going on. Uh, this is a Peruvian uh, chili pepper. It's spicy. It tastes like a habanero, but it's about... Uh, the spicy level is between a jalapeno and a habanero. It's called aji amarillo. It's like a fruity spice. Yeah, kind of like a tropical tasting, kind of like a habanero. Just without without as much kick, but with all the flavor. It has kick. Don't listen to him. A little bit of kick. <laughs> a little bit spicier than a jalapeno. Sour cream can fix um, that. And uh, yeah, aji, you spell it A-J-I. It's a staple in Peruvian cuisine, like aji de gallina. And uh, ahi paste is super good for like French fries and chips and dip and all that. Yucca fries. Um, all right, and then, yeah, this is uh, our asparagus garden in between these uh, stone fruits. And if you come right here and look at this asparagus. So oh, just about tripped on we, that. We used uh, three-year-old crowns. We put them in the ground and we didn't do a harvest because we wanted them to go into this fern here. And it's going to fixate just a ton of uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere. And it's just going to put a ton of energy in the roots. So then in the spring, in about, uh, let's see, four or five, six months from now, we're gonna get a ton of asparagus. These beds will be loaded with asparagus spears that we can harvest to eat and freeze as well. And asparagus is super healthy, it's a perennial. If I take care of this asparagus in these raised beds uh, in this orchard, then the asparagus can give us a harvest for probably 15 to 20 years. Can you believe it? Do you wanna explain why you cut them the way you did? Like why, what, why did you well, choose the branches that you, that you cut? Yeah, like, so we really want to open up the canopy in fruit trees and I am by no means an expert, but I've watched and listened to a lot of experts. And so, um, you know, I'm not a professional and we're not doing this commercial or, you know, for a profit, it's just for our home, our backyard orchard. And uh, so it's really important with fruit trees to open up the canopy so that there's ventilation and airflow and sunshine, because that'll decrease uh, pest pressure fungus pressure, disease pressure. Show me what you mean by opening it up. So the canopy is right here. So basically you see how it's really open right here and all the branches are going lateral. They're going outward um, from the center of the tree. So, so that's that sun like, can hit the center of the tree. Yeah, so the and center not of the tree is open for airflow. Have like mildew and that kind of thing. Yeah, and then also for us, like I said, we're dwarfing the trees. And so I'm not really gonna let it grow more than about six feet tall. And I'm six feet tall, so you can see. Um, and uh, that'll give us this our will give kids us will have an easier time picking and our pear trees we're not um they're not over here they're in a different orchard but our pear trees can you flip it how do i flip it our pear trees are on the other side of the farm they were here when we got here and we get lots of pears from them and they're delicious but they're like so tall and they're really hard to harvest 
and like our kids really can't pick at them and they've really not been taken care of so we're still getting fruit from them from them and we're slowly like pruning them we meaning him <laughs> he's <laughs> pruning them as we go along um but they're just not very mm -hmm. they weren't very well taken care of i was giving birth not me i was the mid goat midwife we had a uh, three babies born today, two babies born a couple days ago, and I still got two more pregnant goats to go. So we're hoping uh, they'll pop those babies out before this hurricane, because. Yeah, and then you want to talk about the prayer walk? Oh, and something really cool that we did today, um, the kids and I, we decided to go on a prayer walk around our farm and just pray over the farm and just commission angels on the four, cor four corners of the four borders of our farm and um, just asking for God's protection. And so the kids and I went and I just modeled for them. And then they just, they just took, they just went with it. And mm -hmm. they were laying hands, awesome. anchors and they lay hands and they laid hands on all the orchards and all the fences and all the trees. And they, they went crazy with it. That's good. And um, they've, they specifically prayed that our goats would have give birth to their babies before the huge storm hit. And like a few hours later we had, um, two of our goats gave birth and hopefully Sondra will give birth. Yeah, let's um, go take a look tonight. at them real quick, check on them. Yeah. So, so, go ahead. So that was just really neat. You know, mm -hmm. the Bible says, you know, through the lips of children and infants, you know, God, God inhabits the praises of his people. And he, I believe that God has a spe special place in his heart for children. And he, mm -hmm. he answers children's prayers for sure. And just that childlike faith um, really encouraged me. And, um, and then, we were in the barn, the kids and I, after that, we were in the barn all day with our birth and goat babies. So we had all the conversations and I'm just counting that as our homeschool lesson mm -hmm. for the day. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's about it for this video. Um, we're gonna check on these goat babies and we're doing other things to prepare for the hurricanes. Like we're taking down all our sunshades. That's like, uh, you know, shade tarps, you know, over, you know, our pool and over some of the animals. Uh, so we're taking those down and anything that might take flight um, you know, we're taking it down and anchoring it down, making sure the animals have, you know, good coverage and hay. Mm -hmm. oh. And here's the goat babies. Here's Star. She's a first freshener. She's kind of, um, she's not very tame. There's her little baby. Let's see if I can zoom, in. zoom in. With the other one. There's her little baby, a little girl, just one little girl. And then over here, whoa, over here, we've got Delilah. She's the one that's on our homestead shirt. Beautiful girl. Um, she had two beautiful boys. Look at all those colors. This is the second one, and this is the first one. He's sleepy. Look how huge this boy is. He is, I know, he's massive. Like, can't even believe how big he is. There's Anna, and then her two babies were born. They are teeny, how do I say? They are teeny tiny. They were born a couple days ago, Sunday night, I believe. Um, so good job, guys. This guy is so fluffy, like <laughs> so cute. I think he already has a home. I already have someone message me and ask for him because oh, yeah. he's so cute. And, and then- And when you prune your peach trees, go ahead and feed it to the goats and the sheep and the donkeys, they'll nibble at it. They, they love usually it. love fruit trees. Yep. All right, that's it. We'll catch you next time. We'll, uh, we'll do a video if, uh, after the hurricane and see how everything holds up. It's gonna be fine because God's protecting us. Amen. God bless.